So my first thoughts when I heard about the Human Genome Project was like, wow, okay, yeah, we can do that. It seemed like such a, a huge amount of work. <laughs> the early days were completely crazy. We had no idea what we were doing. We were trying to map and sequence a genome when we didn't know what it looked like, what the problems would be. The first job was to sort of, you know, create enough gels to keep these DNA sequencers running. And then Eric Lander came down and said, we're gonna double the number of sequencers that you have and we're gonna get 24 sequencers. So Jim, you gotta figure out how to pour 24 gels. And then he said, we're gonna get 48 sequencers. And guess what? You gotta figure out how to pour 48 gels. My thoughts then were these people might actually be able to deliver on you know, generating this data in such a short amount of time. There were periods of time when I didn't even need coffee. I woke up and my brain was humming and I couldn't wait, <laughs> couldn't wait to get to work. We were working so much and so intensely in these genome browsers with tracks representing different gene callers. The, the genome browsers started to get incorporated in my dreams and I would, I, I frequently had dreams about genome browsers. The Human Genome Project affected the scientific world by letting us all know that ambitious projects were possible. The things that sounded crazy, well, that just meant you had to work harder to figure out how to do them. We used to report to the NIH on how much it costs to sequence a base pair. And, and so like that is mind boggling. Now it's in how much the whole genome was, the whole genome. It was a really global initiative. I was, you know, just not even standing on the shoulders of giants. I was down the hall, you know, and, and up a floor from a giant. Um, and I just feel, lucky that I was able to be there. People were super available to answer any question you had. And so I think a lot of other groups that, you know, throughout, you know, Broad's evolution have benefited from people who kind of learned that lesson early. There was this amazing camaraderie at the time that I think is, um, I think it's still true of the Broad. It seeded so much work in, in ways that we could never have imagined 30 years ago. All of the projects we do now are large-scale genome and exome projects that would not have been doable at all if it wasn't for the, the, the blueprint that the Human Genome Project created. That's you know, ultimately why we were able to succeed in this COVID testing, because it's sort of applying all those things right from the human genome and not being afraid of it. Like, oh, we've done that before.